Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016. So, uh, sorry, my brain went totally blank there. Uh, Sierra's still missing. No news on that front, unfortunately. So what I thought I'd talk about today is, you know, I, I think back to like the 70s and maybe even into the early 80s. And in some ways, to me, that is an era of mysteries. And no, I'm not talking about clothing or hair choices. Although those might be a little bit of mysteries as well. No, I'm talking about... Um, we seem to be very... We seem to be very interested in mysterious happenings uh, back then. That seemed to be very... You know, a, a very prevalent topic. Um, we were... It was kind of a rise in, in, in interest in... You know, aliens. You know, that was like when uh, the 70s was when Chariots of the Gods came out, which was, I believe, all about how aliens had been here in the past and kind of molded and shaped us kind of thing. And and the one thing that was very popular in the 70s was, and, and into the early 80s, I believe, was UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And, you know, they go back a long ways. I think they actually go back to World War II when they were called Foo Fighters, if I'm remembering my history correctly. But, I mean, there was a real upswing in interest. There was uh, actually an, uh, an Air Force program called uh, Operation Blue Book, I believe, that was you know, checking out uh, sightings of UFOs. And they actually made a TV show that were supposed to have been based upon the files of this team from Operation Blue Book that were investigating stuff. I don't know how, you know, it, it, assuming such a team really exists, I don't know how accurate the TV show was to what they actually found out. So, yeah, I don't know. But we watched it. I remember watching that show. Um, and anything with, you know, UFOs was, was kind of big, a big deal. That's why. And then, you know, Close Encounters came out. Which I think was like, I didn't look it up. But I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of like 81-ish, 80, 81. I, I thought that kind of dribbled over into the 80s. I could be wrong. It could be like 79 or something like that. But it's in that that, that basic time frame. And every now and then you see a, you know, a new picture that's released of, of a UFO and some of them are, are you know, most of the, the photo quality was rather crappy. And, but there was definitely something odd there, you know, so on and so forth. The other mystery that was kind of popular during those times was Bigfoot. You know, it's supposed to be this, you know, big yeti-like creature that's you know, tromping through the forests of the United States. Uh, you know, every now and then you get get you know a kind of a blurry photo of this you know Chewbacca-like character uh, going through the woods. My favorite treatment of that, as far as in media, was the six million dollar man. I think there was a couple episodes where. You know, they found out that Bigfoot was really like this robot. And there was, I think, this team from... They were from the future or another dimension or something. They were humans, so they weren't like aliens. But they were conducting 
they were gathering information through Bigfoot somehow. I don't know. He was like key to their mission. I don't remember a ton about that. I, I just remember that there was this when, when you got into their underground lair, there was there was like this this tunnel where you were walking on this walkway, and then they had this rotating um, tube of lights that you were kind of walking through the middle of. That was kind of cool. That's kind of the one image I have from that. But you know, so Bigfoot was 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 kind of big. And then the third one, and this once again has gone on for much, much longer than just the 70s, but it, it garnered a lot of attention back then, was uh, the Loch Ness Monster, also known as Nessie, I believe. And you know, what strikes me as, as interesting uh, about all three of these is, you know, they were based upon sketchy photographic evidence pictures were typically not very good you know and it was an era where not everybody had a camera with them you know it was it was you wasn't you know they didn't fit in your pocket back then it was kind of a rare thing to be walking around with a camera unless you were on vacation So, you know, there wasn't a, a, a vast majority of the population that had cameras to take pictures of, of these things should they occur. And, and what I really find interesting is, you know, now, at least here in America, and I'll say in, in the Western civilizations, I don't know about the rest of the world, but, you know, pretty much everybody's got a phone in their pocket. I mean, got a... You know, they got a phone in their pocket, and that is also a camera in their pocket. So everybody's got a camera in their pocket. But we don't have UFO sightings. We don't have Bigfoot sightings. Now, you know, Bigfoot may well have been, you know, there, there was this there was this couple of guys, I think, that came out at one point and said, yeah, we did Bigfoot, it was a hoax. Sorry. But then I think I thought there was somebody that said, "No, that's not true," because I took this picture, and you were nowhere near there. I, I don't know um, if they ever finally settled on it being a, a you know a proven hoax to these people that admitted to it, or or if there was still some uncertainty about what was what, all, all of the sightings. But you know, now when we've got cameras in everybody's pockets, you know, we don't hear about UFOs anymore, and I find that interesting, they were, there, there, there were, you know, a, a number of sightings over the years, but they just seem to have gone away, yeah, I guess it probably points to the likelihood that, you know, they probably were never really there in the first place, there was probably a little bit of photographic darkroom trickery going on. But, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, same thing with the Loch Ness monster. I I don't know if they, I'm assuming that they've sent submersibles. I mean, now we've got radio-controlled submersibles that we can send down there, you know, like we did to the Titanic, where they're cable-controlled, and we don't need to have people searching the lock. Although it's kind of a big big place, it's not like you search every inch of it, but. It's interesting these 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 oddities that we just got some bare fuzzy glimpses of over the you know the century before now are you know exist only as legends and you know now that we all have cameras we aren't uh, we have no new evidence which is which is I, I just thought that was kind of an interesting interesting thing. I was, I was thinking about that a little bit, you know. Bring back the Sasquatch! But, uh, yeah. So that's kind of what I was thinking about. You know, have we lost, you know, even if they were fakes, you know, have we lost kind of a sense of mystery? I don't know. Is it, is it a 
sense. Is it good to have a sense of wonder and mystery when somebody's hoaxing you? Probably not. <laughs> That's called being a rube. Uh, what was it? Barnum Bailey? Is that who it was? Who was it? They said there was one. There was a sucker born every minute. Ah, I forget. That might have been P.T. Barnum, actually. I think it was. You know, so... Yeah. We don't want to fall into that category, so... In that in, in, in that sense, you know, it's just as well that we've kind of left these things behind. But it was interesting, you know, back in the day when there'd be some new picture surfacing of one of these things. And you'd be looking at it, oh, ah. You know, now we get pictures of, you know... Cardassian butts and crap like that. So, all things considered, I think I'd rather see UFO pics. Just saying. Anyway, I'm gonna let that be that. I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you. <laughs>